All right, welcome to this video where we're going to talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, which is really, really easy. What Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure states is that if you have a sample of gas and it's a mixture, you have multiple types of gases in there, each individual pressure of, for each gas will add up to the total pressure. And so each gas in the mixture is going to apply a certain pressure. And if you add up all those pressures, it's gonna add up to the total pressure of that mixture. A really great example of this is the air around us provides a certain pressure um, you know, to our, our, to our body and around us. So there's a certain air pressure around us, but the air around us is not a pure substance, it's a mixture. It's got oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and the total pressure that we experience here is a sum of all of the individual pressures of those gases. So it's really easy. Uh, so you can use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure to calculate a total pressure, or you can use it to work backwards to calculate the pressure of an individual gas if you know the other pressures and the total pressure. Um, now, the pressure of each gas is called the partial pressure. Um, so exam for example, the oxygen in the air here, um, it uh, has a partial pressure that is exerted on our, you know, to, to, uh, on the things around us. Um, and then nitrogen has its own partial pressure, nitrogen gas, and then carbon dioxide has its own partial pressure as well. Now gases produced uh, in the laboratory are often collected over water. Um, the gas being collected will displace that water. I'm gonna show you an example of this in a moment. But a lot of times when a chemical reaction um, occurs and a gas is produced and we want to collect that gas, will collect it through water displacement. Now, what happens is the water will move, will be displaced within a container because it's being filled up with, uh, with the certain gas uh, and it prevents the gas from, being, um, from escaping. And so here is an example of what that looks like. If you take a look, this chemical reaction is occurring where we have the potassium chlorate and it's going through decomposition and producing oxygen gas. What ends up happening is as the oxygen gas is being produced, it is then going through the tube. You can see it's going through the tube and into that container that was filled with water. And what's happening is, is as it's filling that container, it's pushing the water out. Now, um, what that means is, is that inside that container there, we have oxygen gas. Now, because there's water at the bottom, it prevents the oxygen gas from escaping. And so as long as there's a little bit of water in there at the bottom, it prevents the oxygen gas from escaping. But here is the reality. The reality is that the gas that's being collected is not going to be um, pure because some of that water is evaporating within that container and providing its own pressure. And so there's a mixture of the gas being collected in water. And so whenever you use this method to collect a gas, you're going to end up with a partial pressure for, in this example, the oxygen gas, and a partial pressure for the water. Because again, water the water's evaporating, providing its own pressure. And so in this situation, the oxygen gas is being collected, but the water is evaporating. It does uh, go into the, the container as well to where there's actually a small amount of water in there. Now, what you can do is you can use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure to determine the pressure of the gas that you're collecting. And so inside the container there, uh, if you take a look, inside that container, that oxygen gas and the water vapor, there's gonna be a certain pressure inside of there. And so if you know the pressure inside of there, and you know the pressure of the water, which there's a way to know the pressure of the water, we'll talk about that in a moment, you can then calculate the pressure of the oxygen gas. And once you know the pressure of the oxygen gas, there's other things you can do with that. So the point here is that it's gonna be really important to calculate just the pressure of the oxygen gas and not the pressure of the oxygen gas and the water. And we'll talk about how to do that. Um, the way you do that is you use a reference table that tells you what the partial pressure of the water is going to be. Water will have a specific partial pressure at a given temperature. And so it's actually really easy. What you do is you know what temperature you're collecting the gas at, and you look at the reference chart, and the reference chart tells you what the partial pressure of the water is gonna be. And then you can use the total pressure 
of both gases work backwards to figure out the partial pressure of the oxygen gas. And so we'll, we'll go through some practice problems where we actually do this. Um, these problems are very easy. They're very straightforward. Again, the sum of all of the partial pressures add up to the total pressure. And this here is probably the bigger concept that I think you should, you know, really make sure you understand is that as this chemical reaction is occurring, it's collecting the water inside of, uh, I'm sorry, the gas inside of that uh, container because it's displacing the water. However, there is some water vapor in the container as well, and we have to subtract the water vapor, the pressure of the water vapor from the total pressure to figure out the pressure of the gas. And we'll go through example problems. All right, have a good day.